All right, so we're taking a look at the uh, Beta FPV Light Radio 3. This is a specifically the CC2500 version, or, or otherwise known as the FreeSky D8, D8, D8 D16 version. And I already did a video on the Light Radio 3 uh, Express LRS edition. This is a special request. Someone wanted me to talk about this and how it would work with external Express LRS modules. So I picked one of these up so we can talk about this. And um, I, I'll also have a separate video on how the beta FPV configurator works and uh, firmware updates and how to do, how to set up this radio in another video that I made months ago. I'll link that in the video description. I'm going to be talking about that while I talk about the radio. And you'll be wondering, well, where's the tutorial? That is linked down in the video description. You can go and follow that. It's for the uh, Light Radio 2 SE, but it it works exactly the same way as on the Light Radio 3. So if you missed the uh, video on the uh, Light Radio 3 Express LRS edition, I'll link that video as well in the description. I'm not going to cover every detail of the radio here uh, because I have already shown it. Essentially the external parts are all the same. Um, the only thing that's different is the internal radio module is now the FreeSky, uh, the CC2500 uh, um, uh, transmitter module for the internal stuff. So what the, this person was interested in is using this as like uh, the radio for their whoops and for like anything that has a D8 or D16 receiver in it. And this will definitely cover that for sure. Um, while at the same time being able to use the expansion module here in the back, which is just a na nano module bay. Take the cover off here and you can then stick on these um, external nano modules in the back here. And these are Express LRS it uses the Crossfire protocol. I have already tried the TBS uh, nano module. It does not fit here. You would have to modify that to get it to work with this radio. I'm not sure if it would or not, even with the beta FPV configurator, because I wasn't going to modify my TBS nano module uh, for this video, because I don't think that those of you that actually have high-end equipment like that probably aren't going to spend the little amount of money that this is um, going to cost you here. So this is like, the rate is like $60. And then this module here is $40. So it's $100 for this setup here, which gives you a 100 milliwatt internal free sky transmitter uh, if you're using the internal uh, CC2500 chip. And then if you use the um, Express LRS Nano uh, module, you can go with either the 2.4 gigahertz at 500 milliwatts and I believe the 900 megahertz nano module also does 500 milliwatts and this costs forty dollars so the combination of these two is a hundred dollars and um the person that asked me about this was wanted me to compare this to the commando 8 which has the um uh cc2500 base which is similar with the internal free sky module uh the cc2500 chip plus the uh 500 milliwatt uh, express lrs module which is actually internal on the on the on the commando 8 it isn't set up like this with as an external module um but it's 500 milliwatts as well and that radio costs i believe that radio costs 170 dollars so the main difference obviously is this is a much simpler setup in terms of no no open tx no express i'm sorry no open tx no edge tx for the um transmitter firmware you still are, can use the Express LRS configurator to update your Express LRS firmware on these nano modules. So that is still in play and it's going to work the same as on the iFlight. And um, but all the configuration in terms of your uh, setup of the uh, Express LRS is done on the uh, Beta FPV configurator. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Now, again, regarding these gimbals, these are the next generation gimbals on the Light Radio 3. They, you can see here they look quite a bit different from the first gen gimbals. I think a lot of comp people are going to comment saying that these gimbals are good. They're talking about uh, gimbals from like two years ago when the first light radios came out. Uh, that's Those are the first gen that had some problems. They have told me that they've corrected the issues with the gimbals on the second gen gimbals. And I've been using these on this one and on the other light radio 3. No problems. 
I also have been using the um, ones from the Light Radio 3 Pro. I will have a video on that one again later because I'm still waiting for uh, the Edge TX um, official support to come out for that one because um, uh, version 2.8 is out, I believe, for Edge TX, but it's not yet available on that radio. So that video is on hold until the official support for Edge TX comes out, but that's irrelevant to this video, of course, that we're talking about the uh, non-pro version here of the Light Radio 3. And then, yeah, talking about these gimbals, I've had any issues at all with these gimbals. They've been working fine, uh, no failures. And But, you know, a small sample size, I've, I've only got two of these, and both both sets are okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you have actually bought this uh, or the other one, the uh, uh, Express LRS version, with the next-gen gimbals, let me know if you've had any issues with them. But if you're talking about the first-gen gimbals, you should probably state that in your comment. Uh, otherwise, we don't know which one you're talking about because uh, if you're having an issue with the first-gen gimbals, they're, they don't sell those anymore. So it's, you're, it's kind of an irrelevant comment, in my opinion. So again, now in terms of the configuration and setup of this uh, radio, uh, it uses the Beta FPV Configurator. I did a tutorial video on that already. I'll link that in the video description. So let's talk about that. Let's get into how this actually works. But obviously, there's no open TX here. There's no, no screen. It's very, you know, it's very simple here. So. Uh, you have to either have the internal module turned on or you have to have the external module turned on when this is plugged in. Uh, and you can do that when you when you plug this into your computer. So if you want to switch this in the field, you have to have a laptop with you, unfortunately. I don't, there's no version of the Beta FEV configurator that works on a phone yet. And I believe there's a way to switch this on the fly. It's in the manual, um, but I forgot actually me I'll put it up on the screen here if I can remember to stick it here there's a there's a method to uh, not have to be able to turn off the internal module and turn on the external module without having to plug it in which you can do in the configurator but there's another way to do it and if I remember I'll put that here on the screen and explain that uh, via a little screenshot here from the manual um, but yeah but basically you can have one or the other one, which makes sense because if, you, if you're using like an OpenTX radio, it's going to work the same way. You can have either the internal module on or the external module on, not both at the same time. And also, if you're going to be using the external module, um, you have to obviously configure your Express LRS settings. And this is not running OpenTX, so no Lewis script. So again, you have to use the computer to set up your settings, plug it in uh, into, your, into your computer connect uh, via the BFPV configurator and then configure your your packet rate your telemetry ratio etc um, it works exactly the same way as it does on the light radio 3 express lrs edition but instead of m managing the settings on the internal module you're not doing you're now managing managing the settings on the external module here but it works in the exact same way yeah, so that's pretty much it. You know, I think this is a viable setup here. If you're looking for something fairly inexpensive, you don't really care about OpenTX support, it'll work. So, you know, you want to use this as you, something for your D8 to 16 receivers, your whoops, you know, your small micros, whatever. Free Sky, this will bind to those no problem and work great. And then when you want to switch over to something a little bit more long range, uh, a little bit more reliable connection, use this uh, external module up to 500 milliwatts. And this actual, actual setup here is, in my opinion, actually better than the Light Radio 3 Pro, which is uh, you can have basically um, internal, like, um, what is it, um, 250 milliwatts of Express LRS. And um, then you can put in an external multi-protocol module, for example. Um, that, you know, again, your Express LRS is limited to 250 milliwatts, whereas this one will give you a 500 milliwatt setup on Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz. Also, uh, this is better than the Zorro setup because that also is limited to uh, 250 uh, milliwatts internal Express LRS. So if you you want the higher power Express LRS, you have to go with uh, the foreign one Zorro plus an external module that can go, you know, at that, that point you can go get whatever you want, 500 milliwatts, even a one watt module. Now the big downside of this whole setup here is the fact that if you are on 500 milliwatts of power, the 1S battery that's in here is only 2000 milliamp hours. It's gonna limit your total power on time. Um, so if you're blasting full 500 milliwatts of power, uh, 
you know, basically constantly without using dynamic power, then uh, you're going to probably drain the battery in about 25 to 30 minutes. Um, granted, you can plug in a USB-C here and plug in into an external power bank to keep that battery charged up. If you're doing a lot of long range, that's probably uh, the best solution. A lot of people that do long range, uh, they're worried about their flight time. They actually use a power bank and plug the whatever their transmitter is to some sort of external battery. I know people that have the Zorro do that as well. So, you know, again, these smaller uh, gamepad style radios have, you know, I don't have a lot of space in size. You don't have, you can't put a lot of battery in there. So you are uh, limited in that sense. If you are going to be doing those really super long flights and flying for 30 minutes or more. So something to keep in mind about this setup. But this is a pretty minimalistic setup you're going like this. You know, gets you 500 milliwatts of Express LRS power, and total cost is about a hundred dollars. So, you know, if you're not looking to spend a ton of money and just looking for, you know, basic minimalistic functionality, this will this will work. This will get you by. I've actually, you know, I've been playing around with this, testing it, no issues whatsoever, and the module works the same way as long as you configure it uh, in the software. Uh, I haven't had any issues, binds with everything that I bind with and you can actually you know um, put your bind phrase in this as well using the Express LRS configurator so if you're only needing FreeSky and Express LRS then this is a pretty viable setup in my opinion okay that's gonna do it for this video if you have any questions let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one